Hi, my name is Richard Taylor, and today I'm going to be talking about the new seatbelt capabilities in Primer 18. There's now an advanced mode for path fitting that lets us drag and twist the belt in all directions. This enables fitting fabric seat belts around child seats and through the slots in slip rings. We've redesigned the buttons to start, stop and reset the fitting process and added presets for commonly used mesh sizes. In the meshing stage, Primer can now create reference geometry to remove distortion from shells during the analysis. First, a little background into why these enhancements were made. There's increasing demand to better simulate the kinematic behavior and injury of dummies like Thor, shown on the left, and human body models, shown on the right. Thor has load cells to measure injury directly under the lap part of the seat belt, right next to the slip ring. Human body models have soft tissue and realistic bone structure, which need accurate loading from the seat belt. Rear seat belts and child seats require a twisted seat belt path. Our customers tell us of the challenges they face getting the right results with traditional 1D and 2D seat belt models. They also want to further their research on realistic seat belt systems. A common problem with 1D slip rings is belt runout, as shown on the left. We need fabric shells for contact to the dummy abdomen, but fabric doesn't pass through the 1D slip ring when the pretensioner pulls the belt in. 2D belts, as shown on the right, can be used in some situations to get a better result, but common challenges include instability during unloading, hang-ups at the slip ring, and unrealistic contact friction. Primer's new advanced belt fitting lets us use fabric shells over most of the seat belt route, including through both of the slip rings. Matte fabric is robust, accurate and stable when unloading. It has the benefits of bending stiffness and we can use airbag reference geometry to remove any initially stretched elements. We'll take a look at these in more depth later. The process to fit a seat belt in Primer hasn't changed. First, we select the parts in the model that the seat belt will touch during the fitting process. Now though, we can include finely meshed models of the slip rings as the belt will pass through these slots. The next step is to pick the points that make up the seat belt path. To save time, I'll read the path points from a CSV file. This function was added in version 17. I've chosen typical points on the structure, but you'll see two points at each slip ring. Making a point either side, like this, helps us steer the belt through each slot. On the Fitting Options panel, you'll now see a Seat Belt Mesh Density dropdown from which we can select different preset mesh sizes. Element length and number of rows are still fully customizable on the panel below. The very fine setting gives a three millimeter mesh length and works well for detailed applications. The defined path menu hasn't changed with options to control projection, twist and coordinates at each point. From 18, the Advanced checkbox activates the new editor, giving us a triad of drag handles at each point and many other controls. The Fitting Options panel now has a new Path Visualization tab, where we can control visibility of the new intermediate points and the new drag handles. Here, you'll also find options to show the belt and surrounding shell parts with their true thickness in 3D. Let's take a closer look at one point on the belt path. First, the point itself can be dragged in any direction. Dragging the arrow handles will pull the point in that local direction. Dragging the cube handles will twist the belt. Blue and green twist the plane of the belt at that point. Red cubes break the spline and can give us a sharp change in direction, independent of the other side. Right click dragging these cubes skews the belt in each local direction. These controls can be quickly mastered 
to manipulate the belt through the most extreme geometries. Let's tackle the shoulder slip ring. I'll activate advanced mode and turn off the intermediate points. I drag the blue cubes to point outwards, green cubes so the belt plane lines up with the slot, then red cubes using the left and right mouse buttons until I see the belt pass through the slot. Next, we're ready for a test fit. We've changed the buttons to play, pause and reset, making it clearer to use. Next, let's move on to the lap buckle slip ring. First, let's sort out the approaching belt twist, then move on to the two points at either side of the buckle slot. Just like we did before, adjust the blue cubes to point outwards, then the green cubes to align the belt plane with the slot. Then we can tweak the red cubes using both left and right mouse buttons until we see the belt pass through the slot without any penetration. This part has a tight radius, so from version 18, we can set the local element length just for this section to be smaller than the rest of the belt. If during fitting, you see the belt slide and hit the end of the slot like this, you can set local friction to one, which has the special effect of stopping all sliding motion. To help the belt fit over the lap, we can tweak the points and set curl angle. This adds curvature to the belt, letting us get closer to the final shape. Here we set the curl angle in three locations, two on the lap and one next to the seat. A final tweak to remove penetration and we have a well-fitted belt. Next, we mesh using 1D belts at the ends and fabric shells for most of the path. The new option to create reference geometry is on and Primer generates a shell mesh along the path we defined. Let's take a look at the reference geometry. This lets us remove initial stretch and distortion during the analysis. So there we have it, a complete fitted shell belt. The benefit of reference geometry can be seen here. A few elements in yellow and red were left stretched by the belt fitter. We can set a load curve in matte fabric to remove the stretch in the first 5 milliseconds. In the analysis, the belt passes smoothly through both slip rings using just regular contact settings. We use quite stiff coating property for the fabric, but this gives realistic deformation with a 3mm mesh size. The mechanism for contact friction between belt, buckle and pelvis is also realistically simulated. In summary, the powerful new tools in Primer 18 make it easier than ever to create realistic seat belts. We hope this helps in the virtual development of advanced restraint systems to keep all passengers safe in an accident. Thank you for your attention and look forward to hearing your feedback.